Alright, okay. So, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh and welcome to tonight's Instagram live session with Iman. Uh, my name is Nur Izaida and tonight we will be talking to an author whose book has become a bestseller ever since it made its appearance on imanshop.com. Um, but in the meantime, uh, while we wait for our special guest to arrive online, let me first share with you that right now, starting um, today until the 3rd of July, Pesta Buku Iman is currently going on online. Now, if you are a bookish people like me, uh, you would know that two weeks ago there was the KL International Book Fair uh, happening in World Trade Center KL. So we shocked till we dropped. There were so many promotions and discounts going on. Uh, but some of you may not be able to, were not able to join the uh, Pesta Buku Antarabangsa Kuala Lumpur. So for these two weeks, Iman will be bringing to you the book festival online. So you can skip the crowd, shop till you drop, and basically just enjoy shopping from the comforts of your own home, inshallah. So um, let me tell you a bit about the discounts that are going on. Um, there are selected books that are going on discount up to 90% off. Uh, we also have a clearance section with books going on as low as one ringgit. Uh, there will be a 10% off on all books including newly released ones. And the most important one is free shipping for purchases above 80 ringgit. So be sure to head on to imanshop.com imanshop and feast your eyes on the thousands of titles we have over there. Um, so, inshallah, we'll be waiting for a moment for our author to join us online. In the meantime, if you have any questions that you would like to ask the author, uh, feel free to drop your questions and comment uh, in the section in the chat section below. So, I see that our sister Farhat Amin, our author Farhat Amin, is already online. Let's see if I can get her to um, request to join this um, live session. <coughs> Just a moment. Yes, hi, Sister uh, Sister Farhad. Um, is there a way for you to, let's see. Um, let's see if I can invite you. Yes. Assalamualaikum, Sister Farhat. Waalaikum assalam. Sorry for the delay. Huh. How, how are you? You okay? No worries. I'm doing very good. I'm uh, Nur Izaida, but you can call me Aida for short. Uh, and I, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for making the time to actually join us tonight. I believe it's actually 1.30 p.m. in the UK, yes? Yes, that's why it's, it's very hot here today. That's <laughs> oh. part of the reason why I was a bit late. I was trying to get... Find the coolest room to go to. <laughs> yes, the summer has arrived, it seems. Yeah, alhamdulillah. You know, in the UK, we don't get summer oh, very yeah. often. So when we do, we, we get very excited. Oh. And then we, but, but then we can't take the heat. We're not used to it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the Malaysians were so used to the heat. So yeah, insyaAllah, may Allah grant you strength to endure the heat, insyaAllah. All right, Sister Farhan. Um, let's, all right. Um, okay, so tonight, the title of our talk, as all of us are aware, is Stay Single or Get Married. <laughs> Uh, we will be having a chat with you, uh, author Sister uh, Farhat Amin, whose book, like I've mentioned before, Smart Single Muslima, took us by storm in imanshop.com. Yes, that's the one. Um, it is one of the most fast-selling titles on our website. However, unfortunately, currently it's out of stock because everybody okay. seems to be wanting to get their hands on it. Yeah, it will be available okay. online, inshallah, within two weeks' time, hopefully, inshallah. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. uh, I... Um, I know that you also have other books uh, that you've written as well. So we will be promoting and talking about those books as well, inshallah. All right. So before we proceed, um, let allow me for a moment to introduce you to our audience, inshallah. So Sister Farhat Amin uh, is a graduate of UCL, University College London Institute of Education. She was a high school English teacher, uh, which then later became a Muslim coach for people seeking help for matters uh, related to love, marriage, and I believe parenting in Islam as well. So she is an author to numerous books, one of it being is the fast-selling Smart Single Muslimah. Uh, I believe you also host your own podcast a show titled The Smart Muslimah, and you also have your own YouTube channel, Alhamdulillah. So, <laughs> Sister Farhad, to start off our conversation, can you share with us a bit about yourself and what are you really educating or advocating through your books and podcasts? Okay, well, first of all, I have just like to thank Iman um, Shafiq for having me on. It's been, uh, working with you guys has been so nice, oh, alhamdulillah. Yeah. I think you're probably the nicest <laughs> bookshop and, and just the nicest team. Everyone oh, I've Masha. spoken to on email and over the phone, Alhamdulillah, it's been really nice. Um, yeah, so really, I think um, w with my writing, uh, it's interesting. I hadn't planned on becoming an author. As you said, mm. I was a high school teacher. Mm. However, living in UK as a Muslim um, and being a practicing Muslim for over, like I, I, I started to wear hijab when I was at college. Mm. And it's been, it's been very interesting observing the, the different challenges <laughs> that Muslim women face in living in the West and, and mainly the challenge that we want to hold on to our Islam and we want to obey Allah but what are the difficulties that are put in our way not by Islam but it's, it's just by the fact of living in the West and so this is something I've been very interested in because it's a struggle I've had and I see my sisters in the UK in in the US in Europe um, but interestingly it seems that in Malaysia and in the Muslim world that we have very common um, tra challenges that we're all mm -hmm. facing. So I've always been interested in this and, and a lot of my reading and the talks and um, <clears throat> the, the courses that I've attended over the years, um, you know, as a Muslim, you want to know what are my roles, what are my responsibilities, how do I best obey my creed, how do I get to mm -hmm. Jannah, basically. That, that's mm -hmm. what we're all striving to do. And so one of the things that I found very interesting um, and surprising was how as Muslim women, when we want to, uh, when we want to get married, it seems to become more difficult nowadays, and that's something that I was noticing. Um, and, but speaking to when uh, when I was giving, um, I gave some talks on feminism and Islam, and, and the role of women in Islam. The the discussions I had with sisters was that um, the, the topic of marriage kept coming up, mm. and initially I just thought, well, that's just life. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it, you know it, it's easy. But in particular, what seems to be happening, and, and when I'm saying this, I'm not passing judgment mm -hmm. on men or women. Mm -hmm. that, that's what's one of the problems I think happens is when the topic of marriage and why sisters are single. Now, I focus on sisters because I'm a woman and my audience are women. I don't write for men. So I don't, and I, I don't think I'm qualified um, to, as in um, I haven't read enough and studied enough to make judgment talk about men so therefore that's why I don't talk about them mm. uh, but what I think is as women we can, as as individuals you know we take responsibility for what is in our control on what can how do we view this subject um and what I've noticed and so again um just for everyone that's listening I'm I'm not judging anyone's decisions uh, my, my all of my writing and, and the podcast that is really to encourage us to think and to really think am I approaching this subject 
from a framework of Islam. Mm. That, that's what I, that's my objective, inshallah. Mm. Because living in the West, what happens is we don't have, we have so many non-Islamic influences and very liberal <coughs> influences when it comes to this subject. So, and it's, it's, it's inevitable because for, for, for non-Muslims, the way they view getting married has changed so much mm. and gone so, um, that it's become very secular. Mm. Religion, okay, they may get married in the church, um, some of them, but as far as religion it doesn't impact their decision making it's mm. more about what do i what makes me feel good um what what are you know are, as an individual i am free to make my decisions mm. you know as far as who i marry when i marry even if i don't bother getting married mm. so as muslim women um we are we're living in that environment and it's very difficult to not be affected by that so whether it's through the books that we're reading, you know, the movies that we watch, the the, the romantic novels we may read, um, and even at school, again, as a woman, uh, getting educated, um, as a young woman getting educated in the UK, get, getting married was never something that you attain, like, it's not something, it's not a career goal, basically. It's not something that you would, you know, you're encouraged mm, to do. Mm. If anything, it's the complete opposite. Mm. Um, but that makes sense according to their way of thinking that for them, it's you You get an education, you get a job and you work and you establish your career. And then um, now the things for them, they have, they will have relationships mm. out of marriage. That, that's what everyone does. But for us, that doesn't, that goes against our deen. Mm. And I just like to say, in Islam, we are, of course, Allah allows us and we're encouraged to gain an education, mm -hmm. whether, you know, Islamic education is, is the obligatory one. And then getting an education as far, as long as it doesn't contradict Islam, again, that is absolutely fine. And even working in a halal environment and a halal, you know, uh, um, uh, what would I say, career. Again, those are two things that are allowed. So I don't want anyone to leave this discussion thinking I'm saying no, women should not get an education uh, or study mm -hmm. um, or work. But the problem, what we have to realise, and it, every single person needs to realise this for themselves, is have we taken that, um, has that, have we been affected, and, and I think the word feminism, I'm going to have to bring that into this, that have we been affected that, to the point where we are also allowing education and career to supersede the idea of getting married, that for us we're also thinking, you know what, I'll... Um, I would rather, I'm going to delay it and I'm, because my education, my career is more important. That, that is something that I see happening. Okay. But then what I also see through my coaching is that sisters who have done that, not everyone, mm -hmm. again, I, I can't, I'm not going to be lazy and stereotype and generalize everyone, but generally sisters who are, I find, uh, have not got married, they are saying that they wish they had not done that, mm. that they wish that they could have. They, we don't have to follow that Western way of thinking. You can get married whilst you're studying. You can get married. You, why is it that we have to establish our career and then we have to get married? Well, that's not what Islam says. You can get married any time you want to. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'll just give my own example. I um, got married, had, had my children, and then I went back to education and did my teacher. I did my degree whilst I was married mm -hmm. and my teacher training. And I know many other sisters who they've chosen a route that fits in with what they, you know, um, what um, it, it fits in with what they, the many things that they want as a Muslim woman. So we want to get, have a, a loving relationship with, um, you know, a husband. We want to have children. We can't, those things that Allah has put inside us mm. and what society, and, and I'll be honest, and feminism in particular, and that's affected the way of thinking when it comes to women and our roles and our responsibilities. They, that's just the complete opposite. Um, it's just that, no, why, why would you want to be subservient to mm. a man? Which, again, in Islam, and again, that's another discussion. Why would you want to give up your earning potential and your freedom mm. to take care of children mm. where you're not getting paid and... You're not even valued for doing that. These are all the things that in, in my book, I, I found I really wanted to look at from an Islamic perspective, but without blaming and having a go at women. Because what I didn't like was when you go online, instead of there being this 
love and compassion for uh, between men and women as far as Islam is there seems to be this kind of like battle going on between mm -hmm. oh well if you're not married then that's your fault you know you should have um you know it, it's very it's quite childish i found mm. instead of thinking how can we solve this problem how mm. can we help men and women get married mm -hmm. it was just let them have a go at the women or let's have a go at the men that you know very, very um an un-islamic discussion i found I see. Uh, and it might get more views and it gets more likes and people sell their courses based on and their mm -hmm. the, you know on uh, i do see this negative kind of hate mm. but you think that's not what islam says and and in the book i dedicate a whole chapter to why is this why is marriage going out of fashion mm. because that's what i was it's not that women and men don't want to get married but i just think we have been so affected by liberal thinking and and that's what i'm hoping we all do that we take a step back and think i need to reevaluate how i'm looking at this inshallah that, mm. that was a very long answer no <laughs> really insightful and profound mashallah um mm -hmm. For those who have joined us, welcome again tonight. Uh, we are having an online um, Instagram live session or basically just a friendly chat with a uh, best-selling author of Smart Single Muslima, Sister Farhat Amin. So tonight's uh, basically chat uh, is entitled Stay Single or Get Married. So as I've mentioned, this topic, any topic related to marriage is as old as time. Men talk about it, uh, women worry about it, and the society has their own idea about it. And I believe the social climate surrounding this topic has also evolved over time, um, as you mentioned earlier just now. So um, going back to what you were saying just now, um, right now there's a different kind of challenge when it comes to getting married. And today women are more empowered uh, when it comes to making their own decisions, uh, whether they want to have their own career first, whether they want to choose their own path first. But how has all these um, basically what society tells us, the education that we've received, how has all this impacted the way we perceive love and marriage, especially in Islam? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that when, when we're looking, like I mentioned previously, that we can't ignore that popular culture and, and, and popular culture is built on, again, the very liberal ideas of... Mm you are free to you are free to do whatever you want that that's the main thing as long as you don't harm anyone else that that, that seems to be the only thing that uh, is the the limiting factor mm. that you know you should love whoever you want to you should um you know no one should tell you how to live your life so now if you just take those two things when we look at in islam we have the prophet sallallahu if you look at this in the time of makkah they had a very, um, whether you call it dysfunctional, whether you, call, you could call it oppressive, we mm. can call it a very, uh, even some of the, their practices regarding relationships between men and women were frankly disgusting. And when you read about the way men and women mistreated each other, and there were no, some some people had fine, mar okay marriages, but if you just, when you read about Arab, pre-Islamic Arab culture, it's quite shocking what they used to do. And when Islam came, and, and so what we find that women didn't have rights, men didn't have rights, children didn't have rights, it, and that isn't an exaggeration. If you read about pre-Islamic Arabia, and I really encourage you to do that, um, and I'm sure there will, you have books in your bookshop about that, that it would, about society, it, it was not nice. Um, if, you, if you were rich and powerful, and you could also, if you were a man back then, but again, you had to be a rich, powerful man from a mm. particular tribe. It's not like all men had it easy back then mm. either. There, there were, um, so when you, that was the society that Islam came to. And so what you have the Prophet Sallallahu when the Quran was mm -hmm. revealed, mm -hmm. and the rules relating to family, to responsibilities, to rights, to inheritance, Islam gave very detailed rules about that because left to people, and left to no, you know, with no accountability, mm -hmm. no checks or balances, no fear of Allah, mm -hmm. no fear of the hereafter, human beings will take, if they can take advantage yeah. of each other yes. and mistreat each other, they will do that. So Islam came to regulate that and put, and the people who were men and women who were uh, oppressing each other, it came to prevent that. It, it didn't make everyone perfect. 
but you now had roles and and we see in medina then you know if you look at sue and mistar uh, in particular um the rules came and those rules were not to um restrict people to harm people not really, they were all for their good and you then see this change around in this completely different society compared to pre-islamic uh, makkah you know in arabia to medina that now rules were put in place and then you also had the law of the land you know the sharia was there and that was enforced but then you also had the example of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his marriages and his treatment so you had that and alhamdulillah then there was more this idea of the tranquility that Allah talks about in the Quran when you get married that that was the the method to establish that <coughs> but like i said it wasn't perfect because human beings aren't perfect mm-hmm. and you need to have the the re- accountability and punishments on pe- for people to to keep them in check so now that was what we were given so now what we need to then think about when we're thinking of marriage so just as an example the family structure it is that you know in the very famous hadith about and I, and i've got um, i'm sorry i'm powerful but i've got all the hadith and ayahs in here but um the family structure we know is that the husband what is the um he's in charge of the family he's responsible to uh take care financially of the mm. has um the wife and children he he's there to protect them you know he has that role and then the wife her sphere of influence and her responsibility is the home the children and then the children they respect their parents mm-hmm. you know that's the that's the structure we have and there are many hadith and ayah that give more details mm-hmm. about that <coughs> so that is our structure mm-hmm. but that is that is labeled as patriarchal by liberal society mm-hmm. and they say that no why should a man be in charge Why mm-hmm. should the, it should be equal it should be completely equal mm-hmm. that that's what we're being told mm-hmm. constantly and so therefore when we're going into marriage we will be thinking it's deciding okay am i what do i want do i want this um so called equality based marriage mm-hmm. or do i want to go for this marriage that um i'm going to be like i'm being told i'm going to be a second class citizen and so therefore and then the thing is what you have is there are bad examples of bad marriages in all Muslim communities that that we cannot ignore now what i would say those bad marriages now if just because people uh, you know um muslims you know unfortunately muslims steal muslims drink alcohol muslims commit adultery mm, you know yes. every you, you have that but is that a reason to then throw the rule out say oh cuz if muslims commit adultery so i'm going to commit adultery mm. or muslims drink alcohol i'm going to drink it's a very it, it's a very simplistic way of thinking that there are so many bad muslim marriages you know men with beards women in hijabs and they're not happy and their marriages mm. are bad therefore i don't think i don't want to go for the go down the islamic route i'm going to try another route the idea where i get to choose and my husband doesn't have he doesn't tell me what to do and i don't tell him what to do but we're both happy that, that and basically that's the model that it seems very enticing and you know i'm going to the way i'm going to find my husband isn't that i'm going to you know i'm going to date and i'm going to go online and i'm going to i need to get to know him i need to fall in love with the per, my the person before i marry them that that's the they the two things that's what we are being constantly told and it's very easy to think you know because that that route is very easy that's the other thing it's very simple there's no rules mm. there's no you don't have to tell your parents mm. you can you know you you like someone you don't like them dump them it, so that uh, way of getting married it, it it's very good for your whims and your desires mm. and what i'm saying in the book is that you know if you look at where has that if you now let's look at western society that version of um viewing love and marriage um or not even getting married where has that landed western society and if you look at women in particular mm. um are they happy now when i'm uh, when i look at that and see that in the system born out through statistics and i've got them in the book that um if we look at you know um women they they've in a, in a way they've kind of in the west they many of them have given up on the idea of getting married mm. that they they've decided because you know if if a man doesn't want to marry you if your boyfriend doesn't want to marry you what mm. can you do mm. but if we just look at you know 
the whole Tinder culture that exists, where they have very, men and women are very casual mm -hmm. sexual relationships, mm -hmm. um, men and women living together but never getting married, mm -hmm. and then even having children, and those children not having, you know, in Islam we would see them as, uh, let's be completely honest, they're illegitimate, that they're mm -hmm. not. You know, they, they haven't got a husband, they're not in, they haven't had a marriage ceremony. Mm -hmm. But there are many things that you see, even if we look at the idea of the hypersexualization of women in particular, that you have to present yourself in a particular way to get a man, you know. Mm -hmm. And once you mm -hmm. even get a man, who's to say, there's nothing you can do if he or, you know, decides to, you know, dump you. And the effect emotionally on women and the thing is, I'm men as well, mm. but that mentally that you're constantly in relationships and then you're, you're breaking up, you're, you're going with someone, you're breaking And even if, you, you know, I'm not even, uh, let's say we don't have time to talk about sexual diseases, you know, even the idea of um, same sex relationships. There's a lot there that when you look at it, you think, is that really the model that we want to follow as Muslims? Because mm. if we go down that route mm. of ignoring, uh, um, saying that the islamic route is too difficult it's too backward it's mm. too it's not modern enough and we accept that what are we then going to turn into and mm. that's for this life whether we'll be happy what about our next life mm. ignoring all the rules relating to male and female relationships and the social system but our akhira we might be happy in this life temporarily but i what i'm saying to the audience is think about very carefully what Think about your akhira. And so, you know, these are like, there's many, like, um, it's funny, the book never, I never meant the book to be that thick, but I just had to keep adding chapters mm. because it, it's, um, I didn't want to look at this subject in a very um, superficial way mm. because I thought for a sister who buys this book, um, I want to address all the issues she may be facing, whether she's in the Muslim world or mm. in the non Muslim world, because mm. due to globalization, um, the problems that we have in the West have now been transplanted to yourselves. And I think maybe that's one reason why, um, if it, whether it's through social media or just through popular culture, to mm. be honest, um, that we, and, and so I wanted to address them because I thought sisters are facing this problem. And maybe, you know, like for example, um, like one of the issues, like I, I, I do address the issues that the Muslim community mm. have, for example, we have a very big problem with nationalism and racism when it comes to marriage. Mm. That we have, our borders are, were created by our colonizers. You know, when I think of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, that was, you know, the British did that. When I think of Palestine, again, the British did that. But there, we, we are one ummah, but when it comes to marriage, we don't think of each other as one ummah. We're thinking, um, I know in Pakistanis have to marry Pakistani. Malaysian has to marry Malaysian. And you think, if we just allowed ourselves to marry anyone, as long as they're Muslim, mm. that could resolve that problem of not being able to find a suitable, com you know, compatible husband. I think some of, so some of the things we have to realize we are sometimes our worst enemies, but understanding where that problem came for, mm. from, but it didn't come from Islam. Mm. So these are the things, and so I think one of the things that I, really encourage women to do is that there are a lot of conversations we have to have with our families in particular mm -hmm. you may not be able to change the whole community mm. don't think you can change think i can't change but within our family we have to address certain issues and if we can have these conversations with our parents in mm -hmm. a respectful manner mm -hmm. i think that's one thing i really encourage with women that don't just stay quiet and think okay if your parents for example have a certain list which is making it very difficult for you to get married. Mm -hmm. You need to talk to your parents and say to them, look, this is, you know, is this from Islam? Is it not? Or can we not change them? Because I'm not getting any younger. Let, mm -hmm. Let's just be um, honest. Mm -hmm. And these criteria are making it very difficult for me. So, and if they're not from Islam, especially, then you just think that's just, that's oppressive. Allah hasn't made marriage hard, mm -hmm. but we seem to have made it very hard. I think that that was quite, there were so many, I believe there were so many points and aspects that were touched and addressed um, in your answer. Um, I guess I, um, if I could steer the conversation um, towards something that is more um, relatable to the audience uh, and, and the struggles that we face in Malaysia, um, 
Okay. I guess currently um, in Malaysia, I'm not sure. Probably in the U uh, in the Western in the UK as well. Um, mm -hmm. Marriage comes with this um, preconceived notion that um, there will be fear and trauma attached to it, so that the idea of being being married um, would open you up um, to, for example, um, living with someone who you cannot rely upon or having to deal with extra responsibilities in which you did not get the support you, you, you expected from a spouse or a partner. So it becomes easier mm. for people to, to opt the other approach whereby I, I don't want to get married. I might as well just take care of myself because I don't have this partner right. that I can rely upon. Uh, and I believe yeah. um, for the youngsters, these are some of the struggles and, and fears that they are, they are facing, actually. So, um, mm -hmm. if, if I can um, ask for your opinion, basically, because I, I see that we have several questions um, in the comment section. Most of them are asking, is it wrong to not want to get married? And I believe it's not because um, they don't want to get married. It's, it's, it stems mm -hmm. from that fear of, of having to... Yeah you know, give, no, not, not exactly give your life, but basically entrusting your life to another man or mm -hmm. even to another woman. So uh, yeah. I, what can, what, I mean, what are your views on this matter to, to help our young ones yeah, um, you know, join tonight? Yeah, I, I think that is such a common question. And isn't mm. it, it's a shame, isn't it, that fear has been connected to marriage, mm. Muslim marriage. Mm. And, and, and I think it comes from, I think, seeing you know, um, again, I'm not generalizing, but pa mm. our parents' marriages or within our extended family, we've seen that happen. And then we think, I don't want that. I'm very, I'm quite happy and content at the moment. I'm, what am I, why would I put myself through that? Mm. And what I would say is that, you know, I think it's one way, like, how can we practically, um, okay, all right, number one, mm. when you're looking for a spouse, then okay. you do dua. That, number one, the power okay. of the I don't underestimate that, that ask Allah to find, give you a husband who will not be that type of person. Okay. Yeah? That's number one. And do I do it consistently? You know, once, once is not enough. You do it, and there's in the book, I've got all the different mm. times where du'a is answered and the etiquette of du'a. So number one, everything has to begin with du'a. Okay, mm. secondly, then the Prophet ﷺ said, so, you know, so trust in Allah, but uh, tie your camel. Mm -hmm. So, okay, what can you practically do to do now? What it means is investigating, I'm just going to say the man for now, and yeah. like, it, it, same for woman, mm -hmm. investigating the man as much as possible. Okay. okay. So, you you know, there is um, nothing wrong with having a, you know, no one says you have to get married to someone quickly mm -hmm. in Islam. You do, you know, the, there's a very clear hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said, you find out about the man's character. Mm -hmm. You know, you get references. Okay. But not just from, so... You, and this is why having your family involved is so important and the men in the family really important because the men can judge the man the man you know we can judge women better there's certain things that we would look out for and the man your father your brother your uncle you know your wali will look out for certain things that are they those and you and the thing is you have to talk to your father and your mother you have to tell them clearly this is what i'm afraid of mm -hmm. now, again that can be hard sometimes but you're an adult, you're, you need to be mature. And so you say to your parents, these are my, this is what I'm looking for, this is my concern. Can you find out about these? But then also when families meeting families, you speak to the mother, you speak to his sisters. That's why you, having just meeting one-to-one -one in a cafe, you will never be, they will just present what they, what they think you want to see. And online is a hundred times worse. You mm -hmm. know, they can, so you have to meet in person, you have to ask them, be, ask them questions that you want to know. And if they don't want to answer them, if they're getting angry or being shifty or being um, like basically not being upfront, then that is a red flag. You think, okay, mm. well, why are they, why have they got a problem with me asking mm. how much, I don't know, how much they earn or how much, because that, that, you know, when women ask about how much a man earns, it's not because we're greedy for money. Mm -hmm. it's, we know they have to take care of us and the, yes. the kids mm -hmm. because that's what Allah has said. That's not being a gold digger. <clears throat> but I think asking questions, spend the families meeting each other mm -hmm. over, you know, a minimum of six months period and meeting them in different circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've got a whole list of, um, you know, questions that, you, you know, people should ask about a potential spouse. 
but I think you shouldn't be afraid of asking questions. Um, so dua, ask questions, get to know them, and then do istikhada. When you do istikhada, and I, that will, uh, you, you need to do it sincerely, and again, not just once, mm -hmm. Allah will show you whether this person is good for you or not. And the thing is, these are all from the sunnah. Like, isn't this amazing that the Prophet sort of said, he's told us what to do? Because women back then were just had all the same concerns as women today. Mm. Our, our natures, men, the nature of men and women has not changed. And so do those things. And if you feel that, okay, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, your, whether it's your brother, your mom, whoever says to you, you know, these are the reasons why we're thinking there's a, you know, so, you know, being attracted, you need to be attracted to who you want to marry. Mm -hmm. And um, I've got, you know, they need to be Muslim, they need to be attracted. But that's just the first two steps. Okay. That's, there's, there's more. And um, don't be afraid to do that. The, um, and also then you should also be prepared to be honest. You want honesty from him. Mm -hmm. You need to be honest um, as well. Mm -hmm. And then inshallah, like I, the thing is that when I think of the people I know who got married, um, when they did it in this way, mm -hmm. it may not have been as romantic. There weren't all the, there wasn't all of that, yeah. but it was a very clear headed, yes. intelligent, mature way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is now, now what we do need to realize is after marriage, there will be problems. So you're going to make mistakes. He mm -hmm. will make mistakes. Yes. You're, you need you, two imperfect people who have been raised in different families are now coming together. And now the thing that you need to do is both, you both have to agree that we're going to go to Quran and Sunnah and mm. have mature people around us who will give us advice mm. and we're going to be willing to take that advice. Mm -hmm. um, and that will help you in your marriage, inshallah. Mm. So there will be problems, so you can't eliminate everything. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're starting on the right on an Islamic foundation and you agree that we're going to keep doing that, um, th I think that will um, help, mm. inshallah. That, that, that would be my advice. But I think the fair, I'll, I'll be honest, the fair yeah. also, Shaitan, remember, Shaitan does not want us to get married mm -hmm. because then we will not be committing, uh, we involve Anything. shamelessness mm -hmm. in, in um, zina. Mm -hmm. So when you're having those feelings, think, are they based on, what are they based on? Like, one thing I, I really wish couples, um, men and women, would stop doing is, you know, talking about their, hus their husbands and wives mm -hmm. to other people and their problems. You know, because what that creates, that also creates this fear that if you have a problem mm -hmm. in your marriage, um, go to someone who can help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, help you resolve that problem. Telling everyone and all your friends and, and the whole community, mm -hmm. you know, what does that, one, it's backbiting and it actually doesn't achieve anything. Yeah. You're just offloading. Mm -hmm. Go to someone who can actually help. Go to someone who can talk to your husband. Go to someone who's going to give him, like, help you. Just creating this climate where mm. single girls are thinking oh my god my marriage is going to be like that but in not in, in no it's not it doesn't just because your aunt or your sister or your uncle has a bad marriage that's between those two individuals you are not your auntie so what's to say this cycle is going to happen with you mm. yeah it's i, I hear that a lot it's, and, and i don't want to generalize but women in particular will um because i don't sit and talk to men <laughs> so actually maybe not particularly I, I sometimes stop going to things because it turns into this very negative talk about marriage and i think we don't let's not do that so much inshallah mm. all right okay i i guess one point that i find was really useful was um, when you mentioned that we need to ask ourselves what are our fears based on actually and um, some of the steps that you uh, talked about were uh, included du'a, making lots of du'a, uh, make istikhara, 
uh, ask questions to the right people, especially the ones who actually know the person that you are about to get married to, and also include your family members in the process. Okay, um, while we are still on the topic, if I may ask one question, uh, in your personal opinion mm-hmm. as a coach, what is the one thing that is often overlooked when it comes to women or men preparing themselves for marriage? Because we've been told to prepare financially, um, spiritually, we make our istikhara, we make dua, uh, but is there one very important thing you believe people are overlooking? I would say stop on social media Mm -hmm. just stop following people who are giving you an unrealistic image of marriage okay (laughs) i I think there's too many Mm -hmm. muslim couples Mm -hmm. okay let's say the non-muslim couples okay they are what we all i think we have all realized we're all mashallah intelligent enough to realize that the majority of the stuff we see on social media is Mm -hmm. fake okay it's filtered it's been, um, I've forgotten the name of that. Uh, it's, uh, well, I'm just going to say Photoshop for now. But there was an, there's, a, there's so many, the, w- the way couples present married life is to either they are, it could be many reasons. Mm. They, they want, um, okay, they, they want the followers, they want the likes, they're trying to sell you something. You know, they've got the affiliate links. There's, they, they, they are, they are selling you uh, this, the, this idea that their marriage is um, beautiful and happy and they are beautiful and their life is perfect and they're showing you their home and they're showing you their stuff Mm -hmm. and they're showing you their clothes. They're not even showing you your children. They're throwing them into it as well. And the thing, when you look at that, you think, oh, you can think that, oh, that's that's what I want. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to look like. And then you compare your one which is really bad for you is you compare yourself to that woman. Mm. You don't know how much, and it's a Muslim and non-Muslim now. You don't know how much makeup she's what wearing. You mm. don't know how much, what, what filter she's use, using. You don't know if there are so many things that like online people just uh, lie. That's mm. all I can say. Everyone is just because they want it. They want something from you. Mm-hmm. And so then, their husband as well. One, I just have, don't have, I cannot comprehend why people present their spouses to the world to look at, mm. to ogle at, and to drool at. Mm. You know, it, it, that you're they're just hassad alone. Just think, why are you doing this? So I would say, when stop, just stop following these people because um, they make you feel bad and they give you an unrealistic idea of marriage because those same people. Do not show all the bad times. Mm. They do not show mm. the difficulties. They do not, sh- you know, the struggles. That's not what they show. And the thing is, you have to, in a marriage, you go through both. And even when you're looking for a spouse, you have to, going through struggles isn't a bad thing. Mm. It makes you stronger. You know, when someone says no to you, um, that was, Allah uh, knows best. It's good you didn't marry them. You'll, there'll be something better for you. Mm. You know, so I would say one of the things, so my biggest advice to, to men and women is unfollow anyone who makes you jealous, mm. anyone who makes you feel, because, you know, as a Muslim, we shouldn't feel jealousy or hate, mm. you know, any kind of negative feelings for another Muslim. True. Also, anyone who makes you feel inadequate, yeah? And so you will stop comparing. You'll stop looking for this ideal guy mm. or girl that you saw online and you'll start looking at people as normal people, mm. yeah? So that would be my... Uh, inshallah, that, well, I've, I've unfollowed people like that. I used to follow people like that. I've even unfollowed women who make me feel bad as a mm-hmm. kid <laughs> or make me feel bad that my house isn't so clean <laughs> as it should be. I just, I just can't take it. Just stop. I thought, no one can, no one can sustain that. Mm-hmm. It's just not true. <laughs> So preserve your sanity and follow all the people who make you feel inadequate or less than what you are actually worth. Okay, um, I think we have around six to seven more minutes with you. But before that, um, I actually, I've read your book and I, what, what, what personally hooked me was the three premises that you brought forth in your book. Uh, the three premises are a smart single Muslima does not deny the fitrah of wanting to get uh, married. Uh, secondly, a smart single Muslimah does not blindly surrender to the choices that disagree with the fitrah. Uh, 
And lastly, through this book, you, uh, Sister Farhat Amin, you aspire to transform how a smart single Muslima should approach love and marriage. Now, if I may ask uh, the third premise, how how exactly do you um, discuss this topic, the third one, um, a smart single Muslima should uh, approach love and marriage? Number one, like you know, I said about unfollowing um, people that has has a certain effect on you. It it, it will um, changes your you know um, our thinking and our feelings mm. are affected by everything we consume. Mm. We have to realize this nowadays, and so you have to, as a Muslim, the way to transform your thinking is you and only you as an individual. Don't broadcast this to the whole world. Don't don't put it on any kind of social media. You have to sit down and think what are my influences when it comes to marriage you know i want to get married but what and when i think of love where am i getting my ideas from when i think of a husband where am i think getting my ideas from and you have to think what are the negative you know uh, influences so now some books by non-muslims and i've read a lot of books by non-muslims and i've um uh you know there's one called um uh return to modesty that i read that was again she's non-muslim Mm -hmm. it's in the wendy shallot that's what her, that's her name uh i learned a lot from her like you can basically you can read books by muslim or non-muslim mm -hmm. but what you have to be able to filter out is because unfortunately there are some books by muslims what are, that are actually not very good when it comes to this subject but if you don't have don't have islamic knowledge a basic islamic knowledge about the subject mm -hmm. how are you going to decide what to absorb and what to reject so number one, gain Islamic knowledge on this. Put time aside to, you know, Alhamdulillah, we, um, when it comes to our studies, you know, I, I, when I did my degree, when I did my teaching, I worked really hard. Mm. And um, so we put, set a time aside to learn for a career and for an education. So give this, give marriage the amount of time it deserves. So gain Islamic knowledge about that. That might mean reading books. That might mean attending a course. So gain knowledge on this and then start thinking, okay, you know, let's say, for example, the music that I'm listening to, is that, am I getting the wrong kind of idea about, you know, is that encouraging me to think I have to fall in love with mm. the person I married before? Now, that is that's a complete lie, by the way. You cannot fall in love. You fall in love after you get married. Uh, and um, and Ella says in the Quran, and I'm paraphrasing that, Allah puts the love inside mm. you with your spouse. Mm. So think about the music that you're, so, you know, and I'm not saying stop listening to music completely. It depends what opinion you follow, but start reducing that. You know, the novels, say, for example, that you're reading. Think again, how much has that affected my view of, you know, um, how I'm going to find a spouse, how even my married life will be. But just as an example, if you look at a lot of literature for women mm -hmm. who are like in their 30s, well, actually, you know, 25 to 40, um, when it comes, so many of them will be about a cheating husband, a husband who um, beats up the wife, a husband who you know, is psychotic, a husband who, you know, the, and the woman, really negative views about marriage. Mm -hmm. And if you, I'm advised to read a lot of them, and now I've stopped. So I think in every single one, is the husband is really bad and either mm. the wife kills the husband or the husband kills the wife mm. you know just so, so um to transform you need to transform what you are consuming so okay start including more islam into your life and start reducing the un-islamic influences mm. that, that would be my advice okay all right so basically being aware of what we actually consume because it shapes how we view things around us especially marriage yes all right one yeah. last question from the audience and uh, i feel this is also amongst the famous ones uh, i would like to tie this with a hadith actually that um marriage actually completes half of your deen and i believe that allah is merciful and islam is just so i would like to ask your opinion not on the technical hadith interpretation part but on the wisdom or yeah. motivational part of it what about our sisters who are single who for some reason mm -hmm. serious circumstances they cannot get married probably because of health reasons or they are caregivers to their parents um how how can they find comfort when they come across this hadith mm -hmm. does does them do they not i mean the fact that they are not married does it mm -hmm. lessen the their value in the eyes of allah yeah mm -hmm. i think um you know any hadith we don't take in isolation when 
like so with the subject of marriage mm. there are um hadith and ayah for different circumstances that women will find themselves in so that is one hadith that is encouraging us to get married and we can see as far as the um have be as a married woman and seeing other people who are married that we see uh, once you get married we can see the you know it, the, the protection it gives to you mm. you know as far as from a uh, committing um you know um haram as far as you know zina fornication you know it helps you to, it helps you to lower your gaze it helps you to uh, focus your you you now have a that instinct that Allah gave you you now have a halal way to um fulfill that and you gain reward for doing that so we can we could have a complete session just talking about how yes that as once you get married you do feel more complete mm. but then also you um so the different there are for for many different reasons women um may not be married but for example let's say the woman who is taking care of her parents then there are hadith about the reward of that mm. and that the immense reward of taking mm -hmm. care of your parents you know there's the the for sisters who aren't married and then they don't have children but then they get to do other so for example they then may be able to study become sheikhs may become um scholars and be able to teach women mm -hmm. and men about islam so and if we at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and throughout Sorry. history actually that there were women who did not get there alhamdulillah there women who got married women who did not get married the women mm. who got divorced mm. women who did not have children mm. there were alhamdulillah there were many uh, you you'll find there were um the Quran and Sunnah covers all those different situations yes. you know there were women who their husbands died in jihad mm. and they had children mm. and so there are i i think what as a community we shouldn't make women all men feel guilty for not getting married mm. that is one thing we shouldn't put this because again everyone's circumstances are different yes. and it, nowhere it, nowhere in the islam does it say make men or women feel bad mm. for not getting married let's shame them for not mm. getting married make them feel ostracize them mm. or you know uh, nowhere in the islam does it say, i haven't come across that but as a what i do see in our communities we do do that we are very insensitive mm. and you think a muslim isn't supposed to harm another muslim with their mm. hand or their tongue yes so don't do that and and really if a woman does not is not married it's no one else's business it's her family's it's her business it's her family's business. why are you even commenting on this mm. who gave you it's like you know commenting on a person's looks upon mm. their weight upon their hair upon their marriage upon you got children you haven't got children even when you're married why haven't you got children mm. you think that's very nosy in islam the tadith about minding your own business so i think what sisters if people are making them feel guilt first of all allah has not made you, uh, is not has not made you feel guilty yeah mm. allah doesn't put that but if people are i think we need to um tell people to mind their own business politely so this is my life isn't mm. the subject of your gossip yes. my life i'm not here to be analyzed by you mm. you know mind you i'm not analyzing your life don't analyze mine you don't know anything i've gone through so please you know inshallah politely mind your own business and then as as our whether it's sisters aunties but we should um back back our single sisters up and say to people and not entertain those conversations because it's not just them we are involved in these conversations mm -hmm. so like i make it a um point not to single sisters now i will not ask them why oh you're not married yet i i just want i realize how maybe in the past i might have mm. but i know how how much that hurts them mm. so i and if people start talking about i'll say i i let's change that i don't want to talk about this that's that's what i'll say and so we need to be more like that as well subhanallah that was i guess that was the answer that most of the sisters online are looking for um and with that i would like to thank you so much sister farhat for making the time oh, to yeah. actually impart on us some of the gems uh, when it comes to the topic of marriage oh, yeah. and love inshallah um i hope you have you will have a good rest uh, after this inshallah in the meantime for all of the audiences online uh, sister farhat ami she has written uh, four books inshallah uh, this one is currently oh. out of stock in your mind yes it's oh. currently out of stock please oh, please, please yes yes i've got it and i've read it 
uh, it's currently <laughs> online. If you can wait patiently for hopefully 10 days to two weeks, uh, it'll be back online, inshallah. Uh, but meanwhile, we also, she also has another book, Marriage Advice for a Single Muslim Woman. This uh, has a 10% discount currently in, on imanshop.com. Uh, hands of our hijab, where you talk about the role of hijab, putting liberal hypocrisy on trial. I, I like the subtitle, actually. Mm. Yes. And finally, <laughs> this one. Yes. Child loss, bereavement, and hope, inshallah. So, um, and not just that, we have all of our, uh, all of the other books on imanshop.com um, on sale as well. So, feel free to go and have a look. For Sister Farhat, again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for basically engaging with us, for having this conversation, for answering all of the questions that um, we know have been harboring in our hearts, in our mind. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And I hope we look forward to actually reading more books from you. So hopefully there'll be a fifth or a sixth okay. book with Iman, inshallah. Yeah. Oh, inshallah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm currently writing um, uh, Islam of Feminism. Mm. It's a book that I have uh, and it's really for, it, it's answering the question, do Muslim women need feminism? Mm. And it's looking at the different aspects of feminism as far as what we are told we should be doing and our role and what we should believe and how we should behave. Mm. Because I think it, it's, and again, it's not an attack mm -hmm. on feminists. That's not what I want to do. Because I think there are many women, Muslim women, who see that, they identify with feminism and think, well, yeah, there's many mm. things that it uh, it works for women's mm. rights. But having studied it for over three years, and I'm still studying, I, there's certain things that actually they do really contradict Islam, mm. and it may not we may not realise it straight away. But I just thought, I, I, yeah, it's it's I've I've got that many notes, and I realised, okay, I need to start writing this book now, inshallah. So. That will come soon, inshallah. Inshallah. May the book be fruitful to all of us. May Allah grant you ilham to keep on writing. And may he grant you good health also, inshallah. Uh, exactly Thank you exactly. so exactly. much, Sister, uh, Sister Farhat. Thank you so much. Uh, in the meantime, for all of the audience, uh, I would like to again encourage you to head on over to imanshop, www.imanshop.com. We are currently holding an online book festival, online book discount. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, so uh, there will be selected books uh, that are on discount up to 90%. There will be a clearance section with books as low as one ringgit. Uh, there will be a 10% off for all of the books, including the newly released, newly released ones. And the most important one, like I said, free shipping for purchases above 80 ringgit. Um, thank you all for your participation tonight. I hope it was a fruitful discussion. May you find comfort in some of the answers shared by Sister Farhat. Inshallah, we'll see each other again soon. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Thank mm -hmm. you.